Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And before we get going, just want to thank everybody that is supporting us on Patreon as the Patreon family keeps growing. Thank you for joining us over there for exclusive videos. And here we see a long stretch of hot, dry weather has left the Mississippi River so low that barge companies are reducing their loads just as Midwest farmers are preparing to harvest crops, of course, look at the timing, and send tons of corn and soybeans downriver to the Gulf of Mexico. This is kind of how it works, and yet the Mississippi is very low. In fact, I saw one article that was talking about one particular company paid a bribe, like $2.5 million to get their stuff uh, in front, and I guess it worked. This is the way that the system works. The, the corruption is, is on a scale that is truly un, unimaginable. So the barge prices are the highest in a decade. And all this obviously is going to translate to uh, a lot more expensive food. And you know all this is going on. Now we understand, and we've talked about this, so many people are catching up on uh, just how the weather is constantly being manipulated. And you know, when we were in in New Mexico, we were talking to some of the locals, and, and they said, you know, yeah, it's been very dry at that time when we were there. Uh, but it's okay. We see these clouds. We know what's going on. We see these clouds. We, we know usually when it looks a certain way, it's going to rain the next day. And then all of a sudden, the planes come. They do their crisscross patterns, and it never rains. Mm -hmm. And that happens so many times there. Yeah. And, and again, this is being repeated all over the world. And then you have farmers uh, being paid not to produce, even in these times. And then you have farmers and, and uh, people with livestock, ranchers, that are having their entire herds cold. And all this is, is just one thing on top of another. It's beyond obvious. Come on. You know, more and more people know what's going on as we look at current drought map and it's it's right down through the center of the country it's in the heartland at a time when you know it's getting towards harvest time so yeah they're drying it out and don't forget the panama canal says shipping congestion is going to last into 2022 as again water levels low from drought are increasing the wait times and now that we've switched from uh, La Nina, El Nino, yeah, the, these things always are switching. But the blame, it, it just gives you something to blame. I know, that's continuous and ongoing. It doesn't change the fact that the food system entirely is being attacked. It's an alchemy of, of destruction of such a mass proportion. It's really hard to sit with this and explain it to people, but people need to be ready. But we got news for you. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. You have the EU's Ukraine grain policy fractures Europe, Poland, Hungary, and Slovakia remain defiant. And we talked about all the depleted uranium in, in the wheat fields, <laughs> etc. All this is going to be, again, contributing to a slow uh, poisoning uh, that's going on. And at the same time, uh, you have the war going on in the breadbasket of Europe, and that will expand. We understand that's part of their bigger plan. And going back to 1871, Albert Pike talked about three world wars that were going to have to be. And they had different purposes behind them. But ultimately, it's the same goal of in, enacting a system where humanity no longer is going to think it's free. This has been an illusion the whole time, is the reality. You have Mexico's president invited the Russian military to march in the parade on Mexican Independence Day in Mexico City yesterday. The Russian military was in Mexico City yesterday. Mexico is the U.S.'s largest trading partner and the country right to the south, and obviously the border has been wide open, and there are a lot of Russian citizens making their way in. There's a lot of Chinese citizens making their way in. A lot of citizens of the BRICS nations making their way and into the U.S. And, and are already here. So I guess we were just not invited to the party. Oh, but the party's going to be at our house, so to speak. <laughs> yes, I know. Yikes. Talk about party crashers. 
Yeah, Turkey could part ways with the EU. So does so says Erdogan. Uh, again, uh, Turkey had some issues with the most recent additions, and we're talking about Sweden uh, in particular. And yeah, I don't think it's going. To, I don't think there's enough time uh, left before uh, everything rolls out for Turkey to really uh, leave. But I do suspect that you know turkey m may switch midstream once once the war does break out and and erdogan might not himself last so long the interesting thing though is is we take for granted things you know we 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 are sold and and it is entrained in our minds and if you were a kid uh, in the 60s or 70s or maybe you were a kid in the 50s uh you certainly were standing up and doing the Pledge of Allegiance, and you might have actually truly believed you were living in the greatest country on uh, in the world without really understanding all the particulars of what made it the greatest. They do that with everything. Our, our belief system, I mean, all the way around, they really do a lot of conditioning to get us uh, proud to help hold the circus tent up for them. And, you know, again, we, we do have people that check in and watch every day from all over the world. Um, but about 70% are in the U.S. And then after that, the U.K. and then Canada, Australia, New Zealand are the largest uh, as far as where our audience comes from. But, you know, we do have a lot of people from other locations, too. But just to give a, a little history lesson, um, you know, America, right? the u.s united states of america where does america come from a lot of people might not know it comes from amerigo america comes from amerigo vespucci who was an italian explorer and navigator from the republic of florence this is where america comes from so literally it, it comes from uh florence italy it, it, it's Italian, and in fact, when you go deeper and you say, well, who is this Amerigo Vespucci that ended up getting North and South America named after him? Well, you know, it's, it's often the case, it, it's who does he know, and who, who is he in bed with, so to speak? And it's interesting, uh, he, he was claimed to have discovered these continents on which there were hundreds of millions of people, according to official historians uh, that give us the history that's constantly being revised every day. There may have been a billion people on the two continents. Maybe there was more than a billion people on the two continents. We'll never really know. Uh, that's, that's part of the unfortunate reality there. You know, and it's so, so sad because with the indigenous people here, um, they just wiped them out. And we have to be very careful as we sit here and we feel very secure in our homes and, and where we live. Don't think that these controllers won't just come along and do it again. So, you, you know, you might have been born and grew up in the United States and you hear America and you just had this sense of pride, not knowing where that came from well again it came from amerigo vespucci who took at least two voyages in the age of discovery first on behalf of spain and then for portugal in reality uh, a lot of times you'll see that these things are really tied to the church every time. Shh, quiet every single time it seems like it's tied to the church well you know and then again you know we had the reformation and all and a lot of people feel that that made everything right. And, you know, like uh, as if uh, Protestantism is completely different from Catholicism. And, you know, again, it, it, it all comes from the same roots as far as the actual book, again, which, you know, is initiated at the behest of the Roman emperor who converted basically on his deathbed. But we'll get to that. But what's interesting is the wealth it's the wealth. If you are a person that makes it into the history books, chances are you're connected and chances are you're part of secret societies because again, secret societies truly are working from the shadows to put their people in these positions. 
And then sometimes you'll have people that are just exceptional. They're go-getters. And they'll, they're always on the lookout for that. They're always looking out for a good go-getter. Somebody that will throw anybody else under the bus uh, to, to better themselves and or their family. And they will recruit them. So when you look to this, he was born on the 9th of March in 1451 in Florence, which was a wealthy Italian city-state. And it was also the center of Renaissance art and learning. And he was the third son of Nastasio Vespucci, a Flor Florentine notary for the Money Changers Guild. Ah, the Money Changers Guild. In fact, when you go in deeper, you find that he had very good relations with Lorenzo de' Medici. Ah, de' Medici, yes, the powerful de facto ruler of Florence. And so it gets deeper and deeper, You're really going deep into the secret societies. And, and again, this is all intertwined with, uh, you know, again, the papacy and with the church. You got to recognize, too, often when there are fractures in things, there are friendly competitions and sometimes not so friendly competitions, as, as we have truly seen uh, the most heinous of crimes committed in the name of God often and unfortunately time and time again. You know, I do I do think it's very sad that, you know, one of the biggest parts of our world and us as a society, the biggest thing, our belief system is that very belief system is what fractures us so deeply. Lorenzo. He was known as Lorenzo the Magnificent. Well, when I asked uh, Cindy, what do you feel going into this energy? Mm -hmm. uh, immediately, she tied it to another famous personage. Right. I mean, they have the same soul stream. And I'm sorry, I, my memory, my memory is horrible. That uh, I'll, Vlad. I'll bring it uh, yes, for Mike you is going to. So we have a visual here because that's all I could see. I couldn't remember the guy's name, <laughs> but I, I remember what he did. Um, but yes, there. This see, these are soul streams. So these people have a part to play, and you you can look at this energy. If there is a way, sweetie, to bounce back and forth between the two pictures, you guys can look at the pictures, and you can see the soul stream, the you know the the aura, the energy that comes off of this person, and it's all the same. Yeah, let me just see if I could get back there. Okay, there you go. So you can see, you know, this again is Lorenzo de' Medici. Yeah, the, the energy, the vibrations, in fact, the actual DNA, there are connections there. And, and of course, uh, you might have some historians that say, well, there's nothing that definitive. Of course not, because these things all get wiped away. These things all get wiped away. They, they are always covering up their tracks. In fact, when we talk about Gil Bates, you know, again, his, there are connections that they have completely eradicated from the net. Yeah, completely eradicated because they control the net. I mean, again, who, who, <laughs> MS, Microsoft, you know, this is all their system. So, you know, when you, when you look at it, and he used to love to dine while people were impaled and slowly. Uh, writhing in pain as they were you know, dying over the course of sometimes days, he would dine and have breakfast in front of them. And the energy here is, I mean, this is kindred energy, kindred energy. And so, of course, you know, because what happened is, is they basically wiped out the indigenous people in the Americas and spread the system, the system that we have now. That, that's you know all over the world now completely pretty much they they've pretty much have achieved it but the, the irony is as soon as they achieve it then we're going out of the dark age and it all crumbles right around them thank goodness eventually we're waiting and we could keep going down we will we'll find the ties to christopher columbus because they're right there i mean the ties between all these people they're all intertwined just like you may have heard how the presidents are all interrelated. Y yes, because, you know, again, kingship is given from the Anunnaki and from the draconian rulership. This is the big reveal. So again, Christopher Columbus was, you know, you were thought he brought up thinking this guy's a saint. No, 
why he wasn't the hero we learned about in school. No, and and so again, this is part of stepping out of the dark age, and we we recognize the genocide that was done against you know the natives, and this is genocide studies uh, of the indigenous people in Haiti. Yeah, which again, this is Christopher Columbus and his men talk about atrocities. He was a murder murderer, tyrant, and a scoundrel completely. No different from today's politicians. No different from today's politicians. No different from what we have in, you know, the Holy See right now. You know, when you look at these guys, you look at their photos, you look at their expression and, and realize time after time the, the painter, the artist continues to capture the same type of energy that's flowing in that soul stream. Yeah, the atrocities are, are just atrocious and, and they're unthinkable. And this guy is celebrated, you know, publicly cutting people's ears off to shock them and, and committing all sorts of crimes. Enslavement, well, again, think about it. Colossians 3.22, slaves, yeah. obey your earthly masters just as you would obey, if you want to talk the original translation, the mighty ones that are not from earth. He was, and then we look to the founder of, of really modern Christianity, it, again, was Constantine. Again, he had his firstborn son and his wife killed. He was a brutal Ro Roman emperor. And what happened after w they eventually got settled in in 380 uh, AD with the Bible was they persecuted the Gnostics. Anybody who didn't go along with the official state program well, you know, you were a heretic, so you could be executed. Just that, just that simply. Again, you, we, we're not told these things as kids growing up. In fact, if you go to a, a, a Catholic site, they talk about him as Saint mm -hmm. Constantine. He was no saint. This is an evil person. Again, this is a person that is is power part of the power structure. And the point is. The religions that we have, the two most dominant religions on the planet, are given to us by these beings. And, and again, it comes out of one tradition. And that tradition views humanity as a slave. If you look to Revelations, where it says, when will the end come? Ah, when man says that he is God. When we recognize that God, the true creator, the true source of all things, is already within us. And we no longer need any of their, you know, their belief systems, no, none of their constructs. And we don't believe that we're going to a, a fiery hell after death. We no longer need them. Well, then their power will crumble. And so, you know, this is what they're fearful of. They have to have us thinking there's an external God and that you have to go through different systems, different dogmatic ways of approaching source in order to do it the right way. Yeah, we see it. This, is, this was brand new today. Letters showing Pope Pius XII had detailed information from German Jesuit about the fact that 6,000 people were being exterminated every single day in Poland. They knew. In fact, time and time again, the Catholic Church has apologized for its atrocities. And you know what we have gotten from remote viewing and going through the guides is... When we talked about 1994 in that African nation, and was there some sort of test of a signal that incited people to actually wipe out another whole type of uh, another whole tribe, so to speak, caused 800,000 to maybe a million lives lost? This is where the origin of it comes from. This is where the origin of it comes from. Pope Leo too, Leo X, this is going back to 1513, he actually said, how well, how well we know what a profitable superstition this fable of Christ has been for us and our predecessors. Yeah, because they've used it. You know, they, they came up with the whole concept. And, you know, as far as they've used that which they needed to use to control a paradigm and to get people looking at the world through their lens. And this is, you know, the reality of it. Yes, uh, you know, in fact, there was a historical Yeshua 
but it wasn't ever about blood sacrifice. By getting us to condone and say that we believe in blood sacrifice, then they march us off to war, which is nothing but a blood sacrifice. I'll give you guys all the links. And there's seven instances here of some of the terrible things that these popes did, 11 of the most scandalous popes. I mean, these people are, they're no different. They're no different than Hunter. They're no different than uh, Gill. They're no different than uh, the Sickle Maker. These are all the same people. King James, you got to watch that King James version. King James is the best version. You'll hear that time and time again. Yeah, the head of the Masonic Lodges in Scotland and England. This is an insider's insider. Do you really think a king, do you really think any of the nobility is going to be out for the commoner? No. They want you rooting and cheering for them. It doesn't matter if you choose you know, one king or another, one queen or another, one church or another even for the most part. You're still buying into the system. You know, and I, I think that there's two basic reactions when people view this and then they go through it and they're starting to think about things and one is like this uh, numbness or like a cognitive dissonance where you just the information flows by and you don't stop and pause um, and the other one is you know if you hear this information you might get very angry and have a knee-jerk reaction to jump in and protect and and really you know just beat up on the person who's putting the information out there shoot the messenger but I think that's where we need to pause and look at any toxic relationship, you know, any really bad situation, you're going to have these toxic traits. And, you're, and, and I think that part, that's the time we need to pause and look at ourselves and say, is this what I support? Is this what my belief system supports? If so, it, it's not all horrible, but you can at least step back and realize I, I'm not going to follow this. I'm going to follow finding myself because that's the essence of spirituality that's the essence of why we're here not to do what these people say no absolutely you know again what you could just go through this is a pdf a short one on the chronological chronological history of freemasons and related events you know just do a, a little bit of research and some actually believe it was sir francis bacon uh that not only put helped put together the king james bible but also was the true writer of the shakespearean uh plays lots of conspiracy here of course there's a lot of redaction lots of revelations over the life of uh, Francis Bacon, a master of darkness and distortion, and also, of course, of secret societies. So, again, Christianity is the largest religion in the world, and it's followed closely by Islam. And, and again, these two have that mindset. When you, when you look to Islam, you know, the, the question is, why are we here? Well, we're here to serve God. So, in fact, we're God's slaves. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically what, what it says. And Islam basically means to submit. Now, there's different ways we could look at things. We could submit to our higher selves, but that's not submitting to the will of whoever it is that penned this one particular book who you're assuming it was actually Muhammad, or you're assuming it was actually Moses, or you're assuming it was actually, you know, John in Revelations, or John in the Gospel of John. And again, pseudepigrapha, that's where people are assuming the pen name of somebody, but they're, it's not really even them. They use this all the time. This is all part of an illusion. But again, what do they get us to do? Well, they get, they get over a billion practicing Catholics to believe in transubstantiation. What does that mean? Well, when you eat the wafer and you drink the wine, you're actually performing an act that would label you as a, you know, can A B A L. Yeah, I mean, this, nobody even just, so few question why. Why would we want to do that? Because what you're doing is you're condoning an act that maybe not you, but somebody else might be doing it. You know, and why, Why, if you really sit with that for a minute, why would you even want to do, do those puppetry movements and just pretend that you're doing it? I mean, I think that's one, another thing that people just, they kind of let that float by because they don't want to sit with it. And with situations like this, I really think that if something 
hurt someone, they need to take a look at why. And a lot of times people are so defensive of their belief system, but that's your higher self saying, you need to take a look at why are you so defensive here? You know, is there something that should or should not be going on? And at that point, you start to crack open your consciousness and you realize, okay, not everything in this book is as it seems. And then you can start following your own soul. Absolutely. And what's the outcome of revelations? What's the outcome of the second coming? It's, again, will rule with a rod of iron. That's not Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And so when you look to Britannica, and again, this is the controllers here. Yeah, they they say it's approximately 2,000 years old. It is the largest uh, religion in the world. And you're talking about the fundamentalist version. All the other versions were eradicated. This is why we, we didn't really have uh, Gnostic texts for 1900 years because they were wiped out. They were eradicated. And all the book burning that goes on. Again, the controllers are always book burning. So this is part of the big revelations. Did you think Christopher Columbus was a hero? Did you realize who America was named after? And again, you have people that just simply believe that, you know, hey, I was born into this tradition. You know, I, I respected my parents, but, you know, can your parents be fooled? Obviously, everybody can be fooled. Anytime we listen to the system, we are opening ourselves up to be fooled. This is their biggest control uh, grid. This is, this is the number one. This is even higher than the politics. And, you know, you still have people waiting and, and thinking that they're going to be raptured and they're waiting for the second coming. Well, there is going to be a second coming, but it's not the true Yeshua. It's, it's again, the, the actual slave masters, the ones in Colossians 3.22 that they're referring to when they talk about the earthly and then they talk about the ones that are not earthly. Well, the second coming is the ones that are not from Earth, the ones that are actually from Nibiru. And so they will be making their way back. And, you know, again, they, they won't be able to exert control over everybody on the planet because there's others out there as well. And we're heading up deeper into the Bronze Age. But those that openly choose to go with them, yeah, you are going to serve them as their slaves because you've chosen to do so. It's, it's just really so, so terrible, but you, you can't put anything past these beings. You know, you use the word rapture. That just does not have a good vibrational essence to it. You look at the word harvest. I mean, harvest is to assume that something has been ripening. And if you are giving away your own soul to something, a belief system that is false, yet you're still giving it away, well, you're giving it away. And... I, Mike and I love to talk to people about finding out who they are instead of just blindly going down a belief system and being spoon fed information. It's just not fair. And when you know something, you're looking at some, you're looking at a train barreling down about to hit a whole bunch of people and you know there's something wrong with it and you don't say anything. Well, I, I think you're just as guilty. I mean, that's a real, that's a harsh truth, but it's the truth. Yeah, and again, you know, it, it's you're gonna maybe maybe look at the King James Bible a little differently, you know, with this knowledge because again, everybody gets a mark, just like every sheep, uh, every cow, uh, you know, every steer is branded. Everybody gets a mark, everybody, and when they do return again, what happens if people disobey? Well, then there's going to be drought, there's going to be famine, there's going to be pestilence, the same thing. It's just deciding to stay in the system in a much longer perspective because they're also going to be bringing technology that's going to merge uh, humankind with AI and, and robotics. So they will be able to keep people living for thousands of years uh, indefinitely. And thus, you know, they are trying to trap the source spark. That's the bottom line. And they do it over and over and over. Be careful of what you put out there. Be careful of who you're giving your power away to. It may not be who you think it is. Always maintain your own self-authority. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.